Okay, we just finished up number five, XML. We're moving on to number six, JSON. Now this part of the lecture is also important because we'll be using JSON for the challenge as well. So let's open up JSON.PHP. Now if I open up JSON.PHP, here's what you're going to see. So I have a associative array with key value pairs. Now when I send this to the front end, I need it to look like this. So I need it to look like a JSON object. I need to have the name, which is the key, colon, and then the value. So we have my name, Professor Wergelis, and then I'll have the next value separated by a comma, so the next key is pet, and the next value is tiger. Okay, so this is what the front end is looking for. Now I could hard code this. So I could do a print, and I could say, okay, I'm going to mismatch my parentheses or my commas, or sorry, quotes. I'm going to put in name, and I'm going to have a colon. I'm going to end this quote here, or start the quote for the uh, value, and I'm going to add the value so I could hard code. I could say okay, and then add the me array. Let's see, I need to end this quote too. If I end the quote. Now I'm going to add the variable, the me array. So remember, period is concatenation. And I'm going to add the name. And then I'm going to, then I'm going to uh, end the quote for the value, have my comma. And I can start the next one, which is pet. Okay, quote for the value, end it. Okay, let's see, end that single quote and then put the pet, and then I'm going to end the JSON, like this. So I'm ending the quote for the value, and I'm adding the close bracket, and then I'm closing the JSON. So this is the same. So you'll see here I have my bracket, then the key, then the colon, then a parenthesis for the value, ending this whole string here, concatenating the value, ending the parenthesis for the value which is here, adding the comma, you'll see how much of a pain this is, put the quotes for the pet and the colon just like that. Now start the quote here, now put in tiger, now end the quote and end the parenthesis. So that's hard to do. And let's say my array changes. So let's say now I'm not using name and pet. Let's say now I'm using something else, class, or maybe the keys change, or maybe I add another key. So instead of doing this, which is horrible, I can actually use the built-in function. Okay, we could use what's called the JSON encode function, which will create a JSON representation, just like we were trying to do, of the value, you pass it. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna send this back. I'm gonna call JSON encode with the me array. Okay, so I'm gonna call JSON encode with the me array. Save it. Okay, I'm gonna update it to the server. And now let's open up index. So when I send a request, it's going to send back this JSON. Now let's make the request and send the AJAX request. So if I open up index.html, what you're going to see is I create the JSON object, or sorry, the AJAX object. I set up what happens when I get the response. I open up the request and send it. Okay, now remember JSON is simply a string. Okay, so when I grab the response, I can actually grab the response text. Okay, they don't have response JSON. You know, they have response and then XML. JSON is just text, so I'm just gonna grab the text and let's see what we have. So I'm gonna do console.dir with the response. Okay, let's see what the response is. Now it should look like this string that we wrote because we're encoding the JSON, so it's creating JSON. If I come back, we'll 
we'll go to six JSON, click on get, and you should see that string that we created. Okay, but that string's no good. That string, we won't be able to do anything. We actually need to put it back into an array or an object, so a JavaScript object. So I'll override the response variable by calling the JSON parse method. So if I want to take a JSON string and parse it back to a JSON object, JavaScript object, I need to call the JSON parse method. Now, let's see what we have when I print it out. Okay, so I'll update the code, do a refresh, click on get. You'll see I have an object now when I open it, you'll see I have key value pairs. One is name and the value is Professor Wergelis, pet, tiger. Okay, so now I can actually use response. So here's what you're gonna need to do for the challenge. I got the content box. Okay, so you're gonna need to update your content box, the inner HTML. So update the HTML to, now I can start using it. So I can say response.name plus has a pet plus response dot pet. Okay, so let's see this. So I'm going to upload the server, come back, refresh the page, and now you see Professor Wergelis has a pet tiger. Okay, so this is perfect. So I'm creating the Ajax request, I'm sending it, server receives it, creates a, an array, sends back JSON, the browser receives the JSON and then updates the page. Okay, so that's what's happening here. Now, if I make this server wait a little bit, let's say I make it sleep for one second, which is what the challenge does, so you can actually see your loading message. Refresh the page, click on Git, nothing happening, and then all of a sudden it appears. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure to put that loading message on the challenge. So there's a variety of places you can do it. I usually do it right before I send the request. So I'll say document .get element by ID. I'll say, okay, grab the content box, change the inner HTML. Now this is the minimum that you could do. I recommend you make a nice loading bar like we showed earlier. Okay, but at least you can put that, some text there. Let the user know it's loading. So you see this text here. Now if I refresh, click on Git, you'll see it's loading, and now the content's there. So that's a much better experience for the user. Now for the challenge, the data that you get back will actually be a JSON array instead of just a JSON object. When you see a JSON array, you still need to parse the array, but instead of just outputting once, you're gonna have a for loop just like we had in the XML. So here we had a for loop, we had the output, we concatenate to the output each time. We're gonna do the same in the JSON. Okay, so we're gonna have a variable for output. Right here, you're gonna have a for loop. It's gonna concatenate to that variable and add on to the unordered list with each list item. But when I concatenate, I'm still gonna use the JSON object. So I'll do response.name, response.pet, and I'll do the next iteration. Response.name, response.pet. You may have an I here, since it's going to be, response is going to be an array. Uh, but the concept's the same. Okay, so this, is what you can use for the JSON part of the challenge, except add a for loop and the output variable. And then the XML, you can use this for the XML part of the challenge. Okay, that's it for this lecture. Uh, next lecture, we'll look at how to make these AJAX requests much easier. So continue on to the next lecture and the next set of videos. That's all for today. We'll see you next time.